All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, book, with a video response to Victor, also known as Give Me a Break Man, Give Me a Flake Man, Give Me a Bone Dog, Give Me a Channel Name, Man, Guy. <laughs> He's got a lot of channels, is what I'm saying. So, I'm making a response to uh, a recent video that he put out talking about why YouTubers leave YouTube. So, just to give you guys a little background on me, I've been on YouTube since 2006. YouTube started in late 2005, so I've been around the block for a while. And plus, I've been making my own videos since 2008, so I kind of see both sides of the coin, you know, from the subscriber point and also from the uh, content creator side of the house as well. So, um, yeah, like I said, I've been on YouTube for friggin' ever, and uh, I've seen a lot of YouTubers come, seen a lot of them go, and uh, it's really sad to see them go because, you know, over time you start to develop a relationship with them, you know, you start leaving comments in their videos, maybe making video responses, you know, sending out retweets and just stuff like that. And then all of a sudden one day they just stop making videos and then they just disappear and they're off doing whatever else they're, they're doing. I don't know, maybe living a life or something, <laughs> who knows? So, um, it can get very frustrating from the uh, subscriber side of the house because like I said you develop a relationship with them and then all of a sudden they're just up and gone and uh, it's very frustrating when that stuff happens but uh, from the content creator side of the house I can think of a couple reasons why that usually happens so um, one of the main reasons that that happens is uh, usually for personal reasons, like maybe something's going on in their personal life or their work life and they just can't seem to fit YouTube into their lives anymore. And if it's something like that, I totally understand. It sucks that it happens, but hey, it is what it is and I totally understand. And uh, other reasons are, um, well, I can use the JVlog community for this example. It's kind of hard to explain, but if I just use the JVlog community as an example, I can kind of make it a bit better. So, um, uh, like I said, I've been following the JVlog community for some time now, pretty much since its inception back in like 2006. So, um, yeah, I've seen a lot of JVloggers come, seen a lot of them go. And uh, like I said, it's sad to see them go because what usually happens is people uh, make a YouTube account, you know, they put out a couple videos when they're back in their home country saying, hey, I'm going to Japan, this is really cool, I got my passport, I got this, that, and the other, I'm all packed up, ready to go, and, you know, they got the little shots at the airport, and then flying over to Japan, it's like, oh my god, it's my first day in Japan, this is so cool, all the signs look weird. <laughs> and then, eventually, they start making videos regularly about their lives in Japan, you know, wherever they are, whatever circumstances, you know, they have. And over time, just like with any other YouTuber, you start to build a relationship with them, you know, start seeing their channel grow and seeing them make more videos and you leave them comments and maybe make video responses or shout their channel out or something like that. And then eventually, for whatever reason, they have to go back to their home country or they're moving to another country. And then, you know, they're all sad, it's like, oh, you know, I'm leaving Japan, it sucks. And then they fly back to their home country or to another country or wherever. And maybe they make a couple videos after that. But, you know, pretty much after those, you know, post-Japan videos, they're pretty much done. And then they just stop. <laughs> so that can get pretty disheartening, you know. And some people stop just because they think they have, you know, there's really nothing else interesting for them to say or for them to do because, you know, doing the Japan thing was their thing and they think, you know, not being Japan or not constantly talking about Japan or whatever is not going to get them the views and, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe you're right but, you know, after a while we don't really tune in because they're going to all these cool places in Japan or doing stuff like that we tune in for them to see, you know, what's going on in their lives at least, you know, I do, I don't know, maybe <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one, I don't know. 
But um, anyway, uh, another reason that uh, some YouTubers quit is um, because they get very serious about the quality of their content. So much so that they end up just not putting anything out at all. Or they have really long delays, you know, in the production of their videos and, and what have you because they want to make the absolute best quality video. No ums or ahs or hisses in the audio or random kids walking by looking at them recording themselves or whatever. They want it, you know, nice and, you know, studio quality, pristine, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's cool if you want to do that every once in a while. But, you know, YouTube isn't really meant for stuff like that, I don't think. I mean, sure, there's, you know, the high-quality videos and stuff like that. But I think YouTube, for the most part, is meant for the casual video maker. You know, just somebody in the room, like, like I am. It's got a camera, microphone, whatever. Just making videos, you know, talking about their lives or just talking about something, you know? So I think that there has to be a balance between putting out, you know, super quality, highly edited videos and just normal sit-downs like this one right here. Um, I remember when I first started doing YouTube videos, I was, you know, very influenced by a lot of the big YouTubers of the time, you know, the the Shea Carls, the Philip DeFrancos, the Charles Trippies, you know, those guys. And uh, they were big proponents of the jump cut, where they would basically take out all the air, all the little spacings in whatever they were talking about. And I was really into that, so um, I, I wasn't really used to talking at the time. And I'm still kind of meh on it, but I would basically like cut out every little piece of silence so my videos would sound super jerky and stuff like that. That would sound very Will William Shatner-esque, if you will. I mean, just look at some of my older videos to get the idea. But eventually I, I stopped doing that. I just kind of gradually weaned myself away from that. Maybe I cut out, you know, extra long pauses or little bits where I'm just kind of meandering on. But for the most part, I try to keep my edits to a minimum just to preserve the natural flow of the uh, of the dialogue, I guess you could say. So yeah, it's got some ums and ahs and stuff like that, but you know, it's, it's kind of a, a more natural flow is uh, what I'm looking for. So in that regard, it's doing pretty well. So yeah, um, I've also noticed that the focus of YouTube changed dramatically when Google purchased it and, you know, the whole AdSense program kind of got filtered into YouTube. And so people were like, there's gold in them bar hills. And they realized they could start making money off of YouTube, which, you know, was great for some content creators because then they could actually make a living off of doing what they already did. And then there was other people who just saw the dollar signs and was like, yeah, I'll make YouTube videos and get a bajillion dollars and never have to work at Walmart or McDonald's again. <laughs> and I was, I was one of those people back in the day and uh, realized pretty quick that, uh, you know, just because you make videos on YouTube doesn't mean you're going to get a lot of money from it or money at all. So, um, yeah, <laughs> let that be a lesson to up and coming YouTubers. Don't just do it for the money. Think of the money as an additional perk. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I noticed that uh, the quality the quality of the content went up because they started trying to compete with you know the mainstream YouTube channels and stuff like that, which was good. But I think the community also got super saturated because you know if everybody has a voice, then nobody does because it's just a big cacophonous roar of stuff. No. So, yeah. <laughs> I think I've meandered long enough on the, on the subject, and I uh, hope you guys found this informative and educational, or at least enjoyed me rambling nonsensically <laughs> into the camera here. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say in this video. So, yeah, this is the Andy Sun.
sign for now. Thanking you guys for tuning into this video and my other stuff. Also, I want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.